We're going to be speaking now about desensitizing the birds to the physical exam. Yes. Now, in order to do that, we have to first speak about desensitizing them to the towel. Yes. Here we have a photo of the mitricon here, which is, which is being towel cradled. Yes. And it's not, it's very, we're very specific on this word. It's not towel restraint, it's towel cradling. Would you like to explain why? Well, we actually started using this word because there was a lot of controversy with actually using a towel. Of course, uh, working in clinics, I'm a technician with birds for a few years working in clinics, it's impossible to be able to perform certain techniques without using a towel restraint on birds. Uh, especially uh, in the early uh, 90s where birds were not being raised comfortable in towels. And so there are a limited number of things that you can do without towel restraint, but there's always these um, procedures that must be done safely with the use of a towel. Mm -hmm. And so the importance of raising our birds and desensitizing them and making them comfortable in a towel was definitely something that we wanted to achieve many, many years ago because we knew the importance was pivotal in the uh, emergency care that can be provided to the bird. In an event of a trauma, uh, the caretaker can definitely assist the bird much more easily if the bird has been desensitized to being in a towel. Right. Now, in our primary lessons, uh, it is something that we uh, start desensitizing to the birds in the first stage. Exactly. Not done in this way, though. No. <laughs> it's it's going to be just a warm towel exactly. over the back, and it's a pin feather stage as well, so it's going to help uh, allow these uh, beautiful feathers to emerge from the sheath. So this is a perfect combination to achieve two things at once. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be comfortable having a towel weight on their back and then this is going to aid when we place the harness as well. But in this final stage now, the bird, which at this stage doesn't have a full crop anymore because the crop tonus has regressed, the size has regressed. And so this is safe now for the bird to be rolled onto on his side. back and it's a play activity as well because the birds actually uh, learn to be very comfortable with this. And with vocal praise and reassurance, and uh, of course we don't roll ourselves in towel, <laughs> we do a lot of the primary lessons ourselves to show our birds, but uh, while we do this, the other birds that are a little bit younger are looking at this bird and, and seeing how this bird is not feeling threatened in any way. Most of the time, this is a perfect opportunity to uh, teach the bird how to talk a few words. And so this is a, a very fun and important thing that we feel is very, very important for breeders to try and, and emphasize during the primary lessons, of course. We want to make sure that the bird is on a padded surface. As very see, important. Well. And in the nursery, in our kind of kindergarten room that we have, we definitely use a lot of sleeping bags and padded mattresses because we do a lot of these rolling into towels and stuff on the floor. Um, right now, for this photo, uh, it was on a table, but it was very supervised, of course. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't leave a bird in a towel wrapped up like this for a very long amount of time. Just a few minutes at the most, uh, because uh, birds uh, over a period of time would not be comfortable. Right. Um, and of course, they would be wondering what we're doing, so it has to be really part of the play, for sure. We're going to speak about uh, desensitizing to the physical exam here. Here we have um, a picture of the mitra conure uh, who's being towel cradled. Now again, this is advanced yes. towel cradling. Yes. And um, we are looking into the conure's eyes. Yes. This is very practical for uh, caretakers to do in the nursery when the birds are young without a towel. Without a towel at that point. Right. Uh, it's part of our health monitoring plan that we usually use in combination with weighing our chicks, in combination with looking at crop motility. There's numerous parameters that caretakers in a nursery can look at in order to then be able to signal out uh, preoccupation so that a veterinarian consultation can then be done on a particular chick if there's anything to worry about. Exactly. But for the, uh, for the future of this bird's life, obviously this is something that will be done during a physical exam uh, performed by a veterinarian, ideally twice a year. Mm -hmm. And so this is a good thing for birds to be comfortable with. Right. It's also good for the caretaker in case there were an emergency at home. Yes. Um, if they had uh, hit a window. Yes. Um, or intoxication, intoxication perhaps. Exactly. Sometimes the uh, uh, technician at the vet clinic cannot obviously diagnose a bird. 
but in a situation of emergency and panic, a caretaker can be asked perhaps to look into the eyes of the birds and see if the pupils are dilating. Exactly. In order to know the severity of the condition, this can be a very useful guide. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is not replacing, like we mentioned prior, the evaluation from a veterinarian, mm -hmm. but uh, getting accustomed to seeing the pupil of the eye of the bird. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially for some species like the Senegal and the Grey Parrot, this is done without a flashlight really because they get really excited when they're talking and we can see it very easily. But with other species that have black eyes, and some of the cockatoo species and some of the Amazon species and the Smartred Conure, then using a flashlight is very practical to be able to see the dilation of the pupil. Right. It can be done in a dark room as well? Yes, uh, it can be done in a dark room as well and, and if we are concerned, uh, in a, if a health practitioner is concerned about the health of the eye mm -hmm. and any form of cataracts or any abnormalities, then they would probably be looking at the eye in a darker room mm -hmm. in order to highlight anything unusual, for sure. So we're going to continue with the desensitization to the physical exam. Here we have uh, the mitred conure being examined with a stethoscope. Yes. It's important to mention that we are not checking for cardiac issues here. No, we're caretakers. We're basically uh, getting the bird desensitized to having a stethoscope move around his whole body. It's a very useful part of the health monitoring that a caretaker can do, especially when they're hand feeding chicks, because this is a, a way to perhaps highlight maybe a little concern in the respiratory a system that could have been the result of a little slight aspiration or something like this and then of course a veterinarian would be consulted for a thorough exam. Mm -hmm. But like we mentioned prior, these are all things that we do when the birds are younger in the chick pens. As they get older now, we try and perform these uh, physical exam uh, techniques without the use of a towel and then with the use of a towel. And of course now this chick is at an age where he's comfortable perch. perching. It's very important that he's on a stable perch. Yes, very, very important. important. Especially for the further examination of a cardiac evaluation, then if the bird is very calm and he's very relaxed, it's, it's, it's an amazing gift that you can give your bird and your veterinarian in order to uh, allow for there to be a good interpretation of the health of the bird without any stress attached to it. Right. Uh, it's very important also that, uh, to mention that uh, we use different watches and we try and make sure that the bird is comfortable with this. Mm -hmm. Along with being, like you mentioned, he has to be calm, he should be taken away from the flock yes. and it should be a quiet area. Yes, and usually this is an activity that we do, we step the bird up and tell them that we're going to a new location, somewhere where it's quiet, away from the flock, it might be the first time that the bird is away from the flock, so vocal reassurance is very important. Uh, and once again, this is something that we do and we don't expect to give a treat to the bird afterwards. Uh, there shouldn't be necessarily a food reward for everything that the bird does, but definitely reassurance. It's just a matter-of-fact thing that he has to learn to do. Very important that it's matter-of-fact and the caretaker should continue these things as well when the bird is aging because uh, a bird that will allow a, a caretaker to touch under his wings and to be examined and to look under his feet as a matter-of-fact you know, thing that we do yes. usually will have a better companion life for sure.